We've been running a lot of simulations to analyze bolted joints and results and applications seem very useful. But how reliable are they? In fact, how reliable are numerical simulations in general? The solvers available these days are numerically very accurate, but the results are only as good as the input that we provide. For instance, let's revisit the bracket model from the last section. We discussed that the contact between the bracket and the wall is modeled using frictional contact. Say we replace it with a bonded contact. In that case, the applied bearing load is fully balanced by the normal contact forces due to the bonded condition. So these forces are never transferred to the bolts connecting the assembly to the wall. If we use this analysis to determine the stresses in those bolts, then our results are unreliable no matter how accurate the solver is. So we need to verify and validate the results from simulations before making engineering decisions using them. Verifying the accuracy of the numerical solution by comparing the results against an analytical solution is called as verification. And comparing the model predictions against physical experiments to see how well the model is capturing the physics is called as validation. But doing either of them is a luxury at times. And in such cases, at least a sanity check would help us verify the results. Validation is out of scope for this course, but let's look into verifying models of bolted joints. When it comes to bolted joints, there are several quantities that we may seek as results, but some of them are useful in verifying the simulation results too. Let's go over this list and learn about them. One of the most important quantities of interest is the preload in the bolt under operational loads and the resultant adjustment in its grip length. This quantity can be used as both the objective of the analysis and also to verify the results. Reaction forces at surrounding contacts and other boundary conditions such as supports are also useful in verifying the results. Stresses and strains developed both in and around the bolt are of interest in most simulations. These along with deformations are reviewed as contour plots and are often used to identify the portions of the model that are undergoing most deformation and are prone to failure. Contact pressure is another quantity that we commonly check in these analyses. It's typically used to assess the performance of seals and gaskets, which are created due to preloaded bolts. Other contact quantities, such as contact status, penetration, and gap, are also very handy in verifying the results. Now, let's learn in detail about these quantities and see how they are extracted in ANSYS Mechanic. Starting with bolt preload. The preload in the bolt can change due to operational loads. It's important to monitor this quantity because success of most designs depend on it. When a bolt is preloaded, its grip length changes and this change is called as adjustment. Measuring the preload and the adjustment depends on how the bolt preload is defined. If bolt pretension object is used, then we can use bolt pretension probe and if a translational joint is used to define bolt preload, then a joint probe can be used for measuring the quantities. The bolt pretension probe reports two quantities, workload or preload reaction, which is essentially the sum of all the forces acting through the pretension cut. It is the reaction from the constraint that is applied when a bolt is either specified as locked adjustment or increment. When it is set to load or open, the constraint is not active and therefore it reports a zero value during these steps, which is why this result is applicable only for load steps when the preload is set to either lock or adjustment or increment. The second quantity that is reported by the bolt pretension probe is adjustment. This quantity represents the change in grip length due to preload. 
It is a displacement that occurs from the applied pretension measured at a point where the bolt is sliced. When the desired pretension is set to lock, this adjustment is fixed and the constraint maintains it unless the pretension is set back to either load or open. The bolt is still free to deform under additional applied loads as only the relative displacement at the cut surfaces of the bolts are fixed. Bolt pretension probe can be used when we are extracting results from fewer bolts. If there are numerous bolts with pretension defined, then one can use the bolt tool. This tool reports both the adjustment and the working load for multiple bolts at once, which makes it easy to post-process large models. If the bolt preload is defined using a translational joint instead of pretension object, then a joint probe can be used for measuring the preload and adjustment. In the details of the joint probe, when we set the result type to total force, it reports the force that are acting through the constraint equations. Note that this value does not include the initial preload that was applied via joint load. It only reports the additional forces that are acting through its section. Therefore, the total preload in the bolt at any given time is the sum of the applied joint load and the total force reported by the joint probe. The same probe can be used to report the adjustment too, but it has to be defined as a separate object. When we change result type to relative displacement, it reports the displacement of mobile part with respect to reference, which is nothing but the adjustment. In both the cases, you'll notice that one half of the bolt overlaps with the other and this overlap is same as the adjustment. But depending on the method used for modeling the bolt or defining the preload, the adjustment may change. After the bolt is cut to apply the preload, you are not left with a single displacement value. This presents a dilemma since we have a single preload force we want to apply, but we have several nodes representing the cut bond. The method used for defining the bolt preload attempts to relate the axial displacements of many nodes on the cut surface, but these MPCs differ depending on the method used. So the adjustment is not a unique value. The adjustment may change slightly depending on the MPCs written. While the adjustment is still reflecting of the shortening of the grip length, it is a single value that is obtained from many nodes, and this results in the discrepancy when using different types of MPCs.